Gore Vidal passed away, and he is down. He is indeed. I, normally, uh, I saw Gore Vidal. Uh, I was with my wife, and we went to this rich liberal event in. Uh, I think it was in. Was it in Brentwood or Beverly Hills? It was in Beverly Hills. My wife is here, and uh, we went to see. Uh, it was like a constitutional rich people thing where rich liberals went, and I got invited because I'm on rich liberal uh, lists, and. Uh, we thought as much, Greg. <laughs> so we go to this event. And what made it more awesome than anything, there was a guy speaking, he'd written a book about the Constitution and how the Bush administration had, had violent uh, intercourse from behind with the Constitution and how it wasn't right. And, and he was a constitutional scholar and he'd gone through and it was very, very erudite and, and well, well uh, uh, made argument in this book. And he was there signing his book. The best part of the whole evening for me was uh, and if anyone remembers this outside of two people in the fucking room, I'm going to weep with fucking joy. John Saxon, the actor, was there. And thank you. John Saxon, I don't even know where to begin with John Saxon. John Saxon was there and looks awesome. This was like two years ago. And he fucking, my wife and I are like, oh, it's a great party and we're having canapes and we're, shit and we're sitting outside on a humid patio. And like, fucking, is that John Saxon? Like, when actors from the 60s show up at a liberal party, I, was, I couldn't have been more excited if and by the way, Julie Newmar looked barumptious. I would so fucking Greek style wrestle her. So we go to see this thing and Gore Vidal's wheeled out, literally wheeled out. And Gore Vidal lived to fucking agitate and be contentious and rub you the fucking wrong way. That was his raison d'etre. He lived for two reasons. To put other people down who weren't as smart as him and to fucking make people uncomfortable. Two things I can identify with almost utterly. I'm not saying I'm like Gore Vidal in any way other than I have the same predilections. Although he was much more openly vicious than I could ever fucking hope to be. My favorite thing I think that every obituary recapitulated was that he said, the three saddest words in the English language are Joyce Carol Oates, which is beyond me. It's beyond me. We're in another fucking galaxy of me. The horse had nebulae just went by and went, oh, that was fucking wicked me. And then he said the four happiest words in the English language are, I told you so. Yes. <laughs> Which I would never say, even though I'm a pedantic pedagogue who is in love with the sound of my own voice and is mesmerized by my every incantation. Right. So he wheels up and they introduce him. And of course the crowd's reverent at this point. And we've all gathered on the human patio. John Saxon is standing with an ascot. And I can't stop watching him. Right? I'm like, what? You know, fucking Bruce Lee and shit. So they wheel Gore Vidal out and he starts talking about President Grant. You think I'm boring and pedantic. And he knows what he's fucking talking about, right? He wrote the book Lincoln. Oh, he knows about President Grant. He's not bullshitting you. This isn't fucking CNN. Or Fox News, where they go, well, President Grant, I believe, was president sometime after the century was a war. <laughs> this isn't the Michelle Bachman School of History. <laughs> if he mentions President Grant, he knew who the fucking Secretary of the Interior was and why he fucking left. So my wife and I are looking at each other, President Grant, for reals. <laughs> so he takes some questions. And people go, well, about, you know, the Bush administration, people, 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 people. And then it was right at the time when all the Republican senators and congressmen were, or Republican congressmen rather, uh, if you remember Bob Nay and whatnot, were all online uh, trolling for fucking male toddy. And you, know, you remember that glorious moment in Republican history that they have forgotten that was only like five years ago when they were like basically using, what is it called, Grinder before there was a Grinder app. <laughs> The, you know, the Republican Congress was like, hey, I think there's a dude near a bush 20 kilometers from here. <laughs> Fuck that. There's a guy like three meters from here with a subway bag on his ball sack. Let's get over to him and see if we can lick the barbecued chicken sauce off before that fucking, before the next vote is taken. Abstain, abstain. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. So they go about these homosexuals in Congress and shit like that. And Gore Vidal goes, my grandfather was the senator from Oklahoma or congressman rather. Oh, he was senator, was he not? 
He goes, I was a congressional page when I was a boy. And I used to give blowjobs in the congressional cloakroom. Yeah, to Democrats and Republicans. And the crowd, these rich, liber these rich liberals who were like, uh, no more questions. Everyone fucking panicked. And I knew at that moment that he would live another four years. His, the discomfiture, the pizza of discomfiture that transfixed every liberal's face in that crowd. Mm -hmm actually made his ventricles fucking open up and blood course through his veins. He flushed with success. I knew that that made him live longer. He was just like... The fact that he told everyone he blew fucking guys in the congressional cloakroom in the 30s made him happier than any moment of his life. More happier than when he won the fucking National Book Prize. Happier than when... Buckley threatened, called him a queer and threatened to punch him in the fucking nose and shit. 